The cooling system on older cars is one big problem. Sufficiently weak radiators in combination with a capricious fan control system, low-speed resistors that burn out, a fan deflector clogged with snow in winter, and a not very reliable engine require regular monitoring. The pipes, pump, and expansion tank must be fresh, plus you need to know the features and locations of leaks on a particular engine. In general, up to mileage of 150 to 200,000, everything is not bad, but the average mileage of commercial vehicles is much higher. Do not believe the odometer. The condition of the wiring, the power supply features of the fuel pumps and the electrics in general and Citroen of this generation also require special attention. On cars produced in 2000 to 2005, this is the main reason for the inoperability of the power unit. Weak catalysts and not very successful engine firmware with their capriciousness in relation to lambda sensors are also an indispensable attribute of Berlingov slash partner. Cars with 1.1 TU1M plus engines are no longer found alive. They say that this single injection engine was very reliable, but on Berlingo it clearly did not stand the test of time, there are no cars with it for sale. Structurally, it is very similar to the TU3, so the difference in operation should be small. Here with 1.475 horsepower there are plenty of TU3 cars. Both inversions with Motronic MP before 2002, and after, with more modern brains such as Mi 7.4.5. The 8-valve 1.4 is extremely foolproof. It can withstand bad gasoline, overheating, and rare oil changes, but after 300 miles it already eats up oil due to wear on the piston group and cylinder head. The high load from a heavy and lobby machine and the tendency to overheat also have an effect. At the same time, these motors are somewhat unusual in design. They have an aluminum block, and the sleeves are replaceable cast iron. Timing belt drive, distributed injection. By the way, the motor has a 16 valve version, which differs mainly in the cylinder head, but these were not installed on the Berlingo. Replacement shells not only provide some points from nostalgic Muscovite owners, but also create some specific problems. So, the lower seals of the sleeves leak when overheated, the sleeves themselves and the cylinder head corrode fairly with a rare replacement of antifreeze, and even with detonation in the sleeves, the coolant boils. The latter rarely, but manifests itself in the form of a strange corrosion of the upper zone of the sleeve. At the same time, the cylinder head is the simplest and most reliable, the valve drive is with rockers and is regulated by nuts, and this should be done often. Of the frankly unsuccessful elements, two can be noted, the plastic thermostat housing, which is prone to cracking, and the oil filter bracket with a heat exchanger that leaks along the gaskets. It's interesting that the bracket can be removed by installing an adapter insert for the filter, as was the case on older generations of engines, but on the TU3 they slightly pushed the exhaust system to the block and decided to move the filter. With runs over 300, oil pressure problems developed due to wear on the crankshaft liners. On motors until 2001, there was a problem with air leaks along the throttle axis and the associated idle speed jumps. Another of the typical troubles of the motor can be noted very unsuccessful supports. The back one breaks especially often, and it is massively collective farmed, installing a silent block from Opel or Honda suspensions instead of the rubber part. However, on Berlingo this applies to all engines to one degree or another, it's just that on 1.4 engines it is most pronounced. On 1.1 engines, the support lasts a little longer due to less power, and on more high-torque 1.6 and diesel engines, the supports are simply more powerful. By and large, there are no more problems with the motors. Rear of throttles, VKG and oil leaks, as well as other problems of attachments with mileage exceeding 300 and poor maintenance, are expected and can be treated with caress and lubrication. There are spare parts on sale, as well as used engines from passenger cars, where they last much longer. Gasoline engines 1.6 liters 109 horsepower TU5 JP4 have been covered in detail in the C4 material, but they are not so common on Berlingo. The motor is reliable, and, despite belonging to the TU series, the block here is already cast iron, and the cylinder head is 16 valve. 
The cooling system also has problems with the thermostat housing and oil leaks due to oil cup gaskets and not very successful crankcase ventilation, VCG. Its plastic tubes require regular checks and cleaning or replacement. Among the additional features of 1.616V, a delicate ignition module can be noted on the state of which traction and catalyst operation strongly depend, as well as a capricious control system, which is very sensitive to the performance of lambda sensors and catalyst. The total resource of motors to the oil burner is about 300 to 350,000, with good maintenance up to 500. In which case, it should be borne in mind that the sleeves are non-replaceable and the motor is officially not sharpened. There are no repair pistons in the original. But there are Turkish counterparts, so if you wish, everything is possible. Rear motors 1.890 horsepower the XU7JB can be found, but this 8 valve is weaker than the 1.6 and has a lot more weird features in operation. It is similar to the larger TU3 motors. There is also an aluminum block, insert sleeves, a simple 8-valve cylinder head, and at the same time a lot of minor annoyances associated with the cooling system and VKG. Particular attention of the VKG, the rear pipe of the system must be insulated, otherwise it easily squeezes out oil in winter due to freezing of the emulsion. Additionally, the motor has problems with throttle wear, and this is more serious than for 1.4 liter engines. Often it is not only the wear of the seals, but also the failure of the motor and sensors, and then the engine control unit due to overload key transistors. Basically, the car is found with a fairly new 1.6 engine with a power of 75 and 90 horsepower. It is well known from other PSA vehicles, the DV6 series diesel in ATED4, BTED4, ED4, or DTED4 variants. It is still produced in 8 valve versions DTED4 slash ED4. Its assembly was recently mastered in Kaluga. The motor is excellent, especially in versions without air metering and diesel particulate filter. And on Berlingo, they are rare. The simple DV6 TED4 slash DV6 ATED slash DV6 BTED4 definitely has problems with the intershaft chain, especially in early copies. When starting, be sure to check if there is a characteristic cod. You can see the features of the operation of this motor in the article on the C4 Picasso. The old naturally aspirated diesel engines of the 1.8161A and 1.9XUD9SD lines are, of course, simple, but will be dead in almost 100% of cases. These are pre-chamber vortex units with old-school Lucas fuel injection pumps, and they are rare, and extremely rare in a live state. Although real mileages before overhaul can exceed 500,000, there are also examples with mileages under a million. Diesels of 1.9 and 2.0 liters with supercharging of the DW8 and DW10 series are more likely to be found on sale. The DW8 is essentially a reincarnation of the XUD9SD in a new block, but with minimal upgrades to the power system, just a newer Lucas slash Delphi injection pump with an injection advanced sensor and, frankly, an old cylinder head. It is quite difficult to meet in any decent form. More fresh DW10 TD and 8 valve version can be found in live condition. You can read about the problems of this line in the Citroen C5 review. The engine is also a millionaire, but you need to understand that most likely it has already passed the first 500,000 and then everything depends on how it was serviced. But the common rail power system here is quite successful and there is nothing extra in the engine. In addition, there are still a lot of them used from cars, where they are served much better. Even with record runs, the brakes are not particularly bothersome. Yes, brake lines and hoses will have to be changed regularly, but this usually comes as minor additional work against the background of body patching, more on this in the first part, or suspension repair, more on that below. The front disc brakes are simple, they serve stably, the prices for these elements are cheap with a fairly good quality of analogs. The rear drums, standing on most versions, also do not present any trouble and serve for a long time until the mechanisms inside the drum rot or wear out to the meat of the pad. 
ABS blocks of generation 5.3 before 2002 and especially 5.7 2002 to 2005 die over time, so they are often simply turned off. According to the average heel owner, this is not a big deal, so it's good if in half the cases they bother replacing or repairing units, sensors, and wiring to them. In fact, of course, driving without ABS is dangerous, so it makes sense to look for an option with a working system. McPherson is in front, and for all its simplicity, it is surprisingly troublesome. First of all, the rear silent blocks of the levers are given and they are rather weak for commercial vehicles. The support bearings and the struts themselves are strong, the ball joint also doesn't suffer much unless you install the cheapest ones and save on lubrication. By the way, depending on the year of manufacture, the balls are different, as are the levers, they are not compatible in diameter. Moreover, traditionally for the old French you will not pick up anything by the VIN number. And the fit of the rear silent block of the lever is pressed, the rubber bands do not change standardly, as a result, service errors are possible at each stage, and the original lever is designed strictly for the standard suspension height, and this rarely happens on old cars due to sagging springs and overloads. As a result, the service life of even original parts is noticeably less than the calculated one. But against the background of the rear suspension, McPherson's problems are not particularly noticeable. Behind is a design that was once inherited by PSA when buying the Talbot brand that died in Bose. Here is a beam with torsion bars, where the levers rotate in roller bearings theoretically, the scheme is eternal, but in practice everything is different. Initially, grease fittings were provided in the levers, but they were no longer installed at the factory on later Peugeot 309 releases, and the 306 and Berlingo did not have such initially. As a result, almost every structural element on machines that are operated with constant overload and on wet and muddy roads is a time bomb. The most unpleasant trouble is the corrosion of the fingers of the suspension and crumbling bearings. If the lever has a backlash, the wheels are house, then this is the problem. The root cause is not obvious, but overloads, the lack of regular lubrication of bearings, and a humid cold climate play a role here. The fingers, on the surface of which the roller bearing runs, are replaceable here, they are attached to the bridge beam and sealed with a very conditional gland. At the same time, even the hole in the lever is not closed, and water gets inside the beam, acting on the bearings from both sides. Roller bearings are also subject to wear, but usually they die due to the destruction of the cage and corrosive porridge from the destruction of the finger surface. There are a number of improvements that reduce the severity of the problem. First of all, the holes in the levers are closed with covers and the cavity of the beam is clogged with grease to prevent moisture from entering. They also cut into the levers of the grease fitting, which allows you to pump or inject the suspension, displacing moisture from the seals. If you do this regularly, the bearings will last much longer. Disappointed as an original solution, they finalized the design by installing either closed tight bearings with the refinement of fingers and levers or a fluoroplastic bushing instead of bearings. The second option is surprisingly cheap, reliable, and allows you not to change even a finger that is pretty damaged by corrosion. Why is the replacement of fingers a problem? There are Chinese counterparts they cost four times less, but again, finding them in stock is not easy. Replacement is an expensive and rather complicated operation that requires heat and a press. There are no problems with the purchase of other components, but repairs will also have to be confused. Replacing bearings and seals requires removing the suspension from the car, disconnecting the brake lines, almost always this ends with replacing them, as mentioned above, and knocking out the torsion bars. All work using a gas burner and a sledgehammer. The chances that the splines of the torsion bars are damaged by corrosion are very good, therefore, during repairs, they are often tacked by welding so that they do not crank. If this does happen, or the torsion bar breaks, a block of wood placed between the side member and the suspension arm helps the car get to the service station. Passenger cars can be helped out by a stabilizer bar, if it is there and in good working order, then an empty car will not fall on its side at all, but will ride on just a torsion bar. In general, do not be surprised if you are offered a spare suspension for your car. 
In order not to waste a week on restoration, some owners have the assembled beam in reserve. The icing on the cake is the frequent corrosion of the attachment points to the body and the low resource of the wheel bearings. But, like McPherson, this is, in general, trifles against the backdrop of an exotic rear suspension. With steering, everything is fine here where, as a rule, is age-related. By a run of 500,000, the rails and power steering pumps have already been replaced or restored, and more than once. Weak, by the standards of commercial vehicles, traction and tips, they have to be changed relatively often. As for the rack itself, an operation you can count on a service life of 250 to 300,000 before the rack starts to tap. On early production machines with perpetually unbalanced wheels without a center hole, the rake wears out faster, all other things being equal. Sometimes leaks appear along the spool shaft. Here, due to an unsuccessful gland, the shaft corrodes a little over time. In most cases, the assembly dies due to corrosion of the rack itself inside due to the breakthrough of anthers and poor maintenance. All manual transmissions have problems with wear of the shift mechanism, and wear of the rocker is only a small part of all the problems. The main danger is the wear of the ball joints of the drive rod under the hood. The small ball on the slingshot breaks off, and the rod jumps off the large ball due to wear of the plastic cracker. As a result, there are huge backlashes and the risk of being left without a switching mechanism at all. Traction needs to be changed sometimes, at least after 200,000 run. It is interesting that in the PSA catalogs there is no switching mechanism with cables instead of rods, but in practice it is found on passenger versions after 2008 with a 1.6 diesel engine. It is much more comfortable, there is initially less backlash and vibration, but the cables turn sour over time, and the ball ends on the side of the box also wear out with 300 plus runs. Another typical problem of Berlingo and Associates is the cable actuation of the clutch. The cable itself is self-adjusting, and it sometimes sticks, but in this case, a little ATP poured into the shirt helps. It is advisable to always have a spare with you, since the replacement is the simplest. By default, the cable is pinched adjusted to full clutch release, and the driver pressing the pedal to the floor will break the tips literally every 10 to 15,000. There are cables without auto adjustment, they last longer, but with them there is a higher chance of killing the gearbox and burning the clutch if not adjusted correctly. A note for the economical, if desired, the cable can be supplied from the Vaz G8. Boxes are always strictly mechanical. On cars with engines from 1.6 liters, both gasoline and diesel, there is a B4R or B4J box, and on cars with engines of 1.1 and 1.4, a weaker MA3 MA5. It cannot be said that these are extremely reliable manual gearboxes, but with their 300,000 or more, they usually run properly, provided there are no overloads and regular oil changes, and its availability in principle. B4 I really dislikes tuning a 1.6 diesel engine, since it has a limited torque just under the capabilities of the manual gearbox, so any chip or just overblown and the box flies. For less torquey gasoline engines, its capabilities are more than enough. With minor repairs, there are no problems either. This is the most successful 5-speed PSA. In extreme cases, finding a contract is not a problem. Boxes of the MA series are weaker, but they were also installed with less powerful motors. As a result, on machines with 1.4 engines, there are still chances of damage from overload. In the MA bulkhead, the boxes are more complicated and more expensive. In fact, it's easier to install B4 and forget about the difficulties with the manual gearbox since they are completely interchangeable. The rarest all-wheel drive cars from Dangel can be counted on the fingers, and in the transmission everything is unique there from the manual gearbox to the axle beam. It is correspondingly expensive. The drive on this generation is part-time, hardwired, and the flotation is excellent. Unfortunately, there are too few cars to judge the resource and features of the repair. It is useless to look for the perfect Berlingo in our area. It is unlikely that a collector's item will come across. These cars were used very actively, and the mileage already on delivery from Europe often exceeded 300,000, plus the same amount may well be rolled already in Russia, given the age. 
The oldest copies after restyling have already overcome the bar of 15 years, and the early pre-style cars are approaching the 25-year threshold. Something relatively alive can be found only among the cars of the last years of production, miraculously found themselves in caring hands, and do not roll hundreds of thousands a year. In general, let's say right away, small pockets of corrosion should not confuse you, just as the current owners do not confuse the painting with a roller and all kinds of scratches and dents. When buying, we are only talking about checking the main power elements and the general safety of the body panels so that they are not repaired using the putty on a newspaper or paint on rust method. An acceptable appearance is possible only for cars after the second restyling and used by private traders. Of course, the galvanization of most panels and the generally simple body architecture leave some chances that an earlier copy will also come across in a relatively live form, but you should not count on this. Although rust spots can be almost everywhere, attention should be paid to those that affect the power structure of the body. First of all, look at the frame of the windshield, they change it often, damaging the paintwork, and no one cancelled the chipped paint along the upper edge. Thresholds are also a very problematic and loaded area, visible from the outside, and for versions with additional sliding doors, replacing thresholds is a rather complicated process that rarely anyone performs with high quality while maintaining connections between all internal structural elements. Thresholds rot from the ends and the arches, as well as from the inside due to accumulations of dirt. Well, an attempt to raise a loaded van on a jack ended in a breakdown of the threshold on new cars. By the way, if desired, the jack can be brought under the suspension arm from behind and in front. The front and rear arches rot from the outside quite slowly, and due to the design features, this is not scary the inner arch is well accessible from the inside of the body, and its roll joint is far from the outer edge. Be sure to check the seams of the rear door opening and the integrity of the front openings, the condition of the seams of the windshield pillars. With regular overloads, these body fragments are damaged. The condition of the remaining elements is not so critical. Of course, the bottoms of the doors along the rolling, the front edge of the hood from the inside, the rear doors, both hinged and lifting, the areas around the handles, all parts of the body near the sandblasting zones and the lower part of the door openings rust, but these are trifles against the backdrop of damage to the supporting structure. This kind of damage is typical for Berlingo and partners even in an ideal climate and only causes cosmetic troubles. Even cars of the last years of production are not worth buying without inspection on a lift. Damage to the floors of the body, spars, internal arches at the rear on cars produced in 2002 to 2008 is almost always there. Cars before restyling without overcooked floors and arches are simply not found in nature. Since the French put a fairly thick layer of mastic on most of the power elements, you will have to poke with a screwdriver during inspection and knock as much as you can with a hammer. Often there is no longer any metal under the bitumen layer, and what seems like a solid structure simply crumbles in your hands. The entire rear part of the body, the rear wheel arches along the lower part along the side member and the mounting points for the rear suspension, body floors, longitudinal floor members, all these elements can end up in ruins. Cargo vans without internal thermal insulation often have better floor conditions than utility vehicles, which have a lot of condensate and access to the floor from the inside is worse. Yes, and the tightness of the body of the passenger and freight versions is worse than that of the vans, due to additional doorways. Sliding door openings and roof joints are actively leaking. Water in the cabin is the rule rather than the exception for the Berlingo. The design itself, consisting of many panels superimposed on each other, fastened to the floors of the car body, leaves a bunch of cracks without sealant, and the workmanship of the openings turned out to be very mediocre. Let's add here antifreeze leaks from the stove heat exchanger on many cars. If the floors have not been dried, then there will be deep corrosion, dead wiring, and puddles under the carpets. The mats on the floor have a base of foam propylene foam and are covered with felt, they absorb moisture well and do not release moisture back. Inspection of the interior from the inside is also required. If they let you lift the carpets during the inspections fine, but if not, 
then at least squeeze the foam rubber in the legs of the driver and passenger, check the rust on the seat mounts, lift the cargo compartment cover, carefully inspect the threshold niches, the joints of the rear arches and floors in the cargo compartment, and also the junction of the floor and side panels of the body. In the engine compartment, it is worth first of all to check the condition of the body cups. Cars after restyling should not have corrosion here. The three-layer panel of the cup is reinforced, and if there are traces of rust, then it will be possible to remove it only by drilling out the entire panel and replacing it with a whole one. This, to put it mildly, is difficult. There are no new panels. There remains a ghostly chance to find it at disassembly. It's easier not to mess with machines where the cups have already gone. Corrosion of the inner wing panel, which is a power element here, is treated much easier and does not pose a particular problem. Usually, the area between the cup and the inner arch is damaged, which rusts on both sides at once and below, at the junction with the threshold and the wing, where dirt accumulates even with a whole locker. But many cars have no locker for many years. The over-engine niche is also worth inspecting. Debris accumulates in it, clogging the drains. Corrosion is rare, but if it is present, the joint between the cup and the side pocket will be difficult to salvage. In general, the body is quite simple in design and can be easily repaired. The most difficult part of it is the front cups and sills. They are multi-layered. The remaining elements are simple in shape and easily accessible. This allows vehicles to be kept on the road in regions where bodywork is inexpensive. In large cities, buying a patched-up car doesn't make much sense. All the extra seams will bloom, and the car will rot very quickly, and the repair work will cost more than the car itself. As with any commercial equipment with space miles, the average condition of all equipment is very poor. There are much more breakdowns than passenger models of the same years. Don't believe the odometer's mileage rolls up easily and without traces, and 200 to 300,000 kilometers for cars produced in 2007 to 2008 is more the norm than the exception. You can guess for yourself what mileage the cars from the early 2000s and 1990s have. It is not always clear why there are so many breakdowns of one of the elements. Maybe it's really unreliable, or maybe it's just due to natural wear and tear. So, breakdowns of headlight housings, at first glance, are a systemic problem. All owners complain about cracks and the need for restoration. But with 300 plus miles and purely urban use, and even with a shortage of spare parts, this is generally the norm. Especially with frequent minor accidents, grinding and other joys associated with the traveling work of cars. Here, a rubbing and weak windshield to a greater extent is a problem of design, aerodynamics, and the softness of the glass. And the failures of the wiper trapezoid are more likely, again, a consequence of large average runs. It's good that many small parts here are from Zancha slash ZX, as well as Peugeot 306 or 206. If you try to highlight some points against the background of resource failures, then cars with a sliding door until 2005 had a very capricious mechanism. The ceiling is insufficient. In the conditions of a snowy winter, it will be necessary to wash and silicone every week. The French bumpers have very fragile outer shells and weak mounting brackets. The moldings are held quite weakly, and losses of body kit elements occur regularly. Unified all French fog lights are disposable and require regular replacement, and it's good if they exist at all. The light is weak, the headlights of cars before restyling do not shine at all, and with restyling the reflector simply burns out over time and the plastic of the headlights wears out, it is better to replace them with new ones than to select intact ones that are not burnt from used ones. Hella from the passenger versions costs twice as much, but they say it shines better. Vibrations of mirrors appear constantly. With old diesel engines, it is useless to fight the phenomenon. The quality of the door seals is very low. The howling of the wind at speed and drafts are rather the rule. Berlingos are generally very noisy, both in terms of engines and chassis. Installing additional noise insulation is almost useless. Even a couple of tens of kilograms gives only a pleasant decrease in tone, but nothing more. Wheel discs on cars produced before 2005 without a central hole, so not only everyone can balance them. 
Even official dealers often do not have the necessary equipment in good condition. Someone drills discs, someone buys an adapter and carries it with them, and in many city cars the wheels are not balanced at all. So do not be surprised that there are complaints about the steering racks, tips and suspension, which we will talk about in detail in the second part. A broken antenna on the roof is an eternal headache if the car spends the night in the garage, the structure is too rigid and inconvenient. In general, it's probably better to say thank you to PSA for the fact that most of the cars on sale are in bare configurations, without any electric drives or heating, otherwise the list of problems would probably be much longer. Berlingo is the case when there is nothing to break. The plastic of the steering wheel, worn to the base, extraneous buttons and stale seats with holes in the skin are waiting for you in most cars. Even cars of the last years of production are often already in a sad state, commercial operation, huge mileage, careless drivers, and the if-only-to-drive style of service leave little chance. For private owners, passenger versions hold up well up to runs over 200+. plus. A rough attitude can break anything, and mechanical window regulators fly, and simple climate control units break, plastic just can't stand it. Wear of elements over long runs creates fantastic breakdowns. Thus, the Dragonfly, the block of steering column switches, at 500 plus runs loses the fixed positions of the turn signals, stops turning on the high beam, and the turn signal release mechanism also stops working. Dashboards give up at very high mileage. You can install the option from Peugeot 206, but compatibility is incomplete, and repairs are expensive. Many cars drive with non-working fuel level, temperature, and other sensors. At the steering column, the play of the cardan shafts becomes huge and clearly noticeable over time. The airbag cables are completely erased. They are repaired several times, sometimes cutting off the edge of the cable so that the steering wheel begins to break it when turning, and the signal in the steering wheel has worn out contacts. The ignition lock is loosened to the state of start with a screwdriver, and the contact group is changed several times. The good news is that many Citroen models on this platform have long been mastered by Dongfeng in China, and almost all electrics are sold there, both for options before the introduction of BSI and after. Including from China, you can order for modest money and an ignition contact group. About the same cost are paddle shifters, steering wheels, and much more. A loose gear shift mechanism is the rule rather than the exception. They wear out the rocker ball, break the mechanism itself in the engine compartment, it disassembles itself, and the rods fly apart due to wear. Versions with a cable drive from passenger versions with a 1.6 diesel engine are more reliable, but there the mechanism turns sour over time, and the ends of the cables fall off. The climate is quite simple and reliable. Stove leaks are most often associated with a rare replacement of antifreeze and leaky joints of plastic and aluminum O-rings, as on later machines of the PF2 platform, for example, Peugeot 307 and Citroën C4 are not here. Valve and cable failures are usually the result of brute force and corrosion of cable jackets due to windshield leaks. The air conditioner does not break down for a simple reason, as a rule, it is not here. Electrically, the machines can be divided into two generations, before the introduction of the BSI unit and after. And models with BSI, in turn, for two periods, before 2005 and after. Cars before 2000, or before 2001, if we are talking about the 1.4 engine and 1.8 diesel engines, have old-fashioned onboard electrics, the main problem of which is weak wiring, failures of the immobilizer module, it is separate here and is decoupled from the Motronic MP7.3 engine ECU, problems with the wiring of the fuel pump and fans. The wiring in the cabin suffers primarily from moisture under the carpets and body structure, just moisture from the doorway gets into its box. The wiring of the engine compartment simply crumbles from old age, but it is very simple there, since 1.1 single injection and simple distributed injection on 1.4 engines cost a minimum number of sensors. Diesel engines have even less wiring, and only a broken wire to the shutoff valve of the fuel system will lead to engine failure. The wiring to the fuel pump is already terrible on the very first cars. Failures due to relays or corrosion of the fuse box and pads on the pump itself happened even before the advent of BSM. 
reduced speed resistors burn out at the fans, and the Bitron fan control unit is located in such a good place as the left wheel arch, where its contacts and all wires at this age turn into an oxide layer, and the unit itself is usually not recoverable due to foreboard corrosion. Smaller failures are also almost mandatory. Breakage of the backlight, wiring to the rear and front lights, non-working ABS units, this is all typical. No one bothered if something not very necessary broke. Upgrading the electrical system to a more intelligent one in 1999 to 2000 was at first a nightmare for all owners of French cars. Even now, when second-hand BSI slash BSM blocks of the latest generations are inexpensive and widely available, and they can be reflashed, this is still very troublesome. Constant failures haunt the owners, and even the increased quality of the wiring does not fix the problem. Any power failures, lighting or low batteries can cause a huge list of troubles, losing keys by the unit, accidentally turning on headlights, non-working locks, wipers, and lights. The trouble mentioned above with the tightness of the body adds to the headache. The BSI and BSM blocks are often flooded, and they are very afraid of moisture. A little more detail about these blocks and the difficulties associated with them is written in the material about the Citroen C5i. Updates in 2005 dramatically reduced the severity of all problems in terms of electronics. Those breakdowns still happen. The non-replaceable relays of the BSM block come around with age, but there is no longer the feeling that the machine is ticking and something is about to happen. Fewer BSI software failures, less sensitivity to power failures, better tightness and contact corrosion protection. From this point on, the machine remains somewhat troublesome, but still adapted for daily use. On older machines, blocks are gradually being replaced with late ones, since this is technically possible, 